uh, a good afternoon, good morning, or whatever it may be where you are. Unfortunately, you'll notice I'm not Derek. He won't be joining us today. He's dealing with an urgent uh, situation, but I'm very happy to be here with you. And I, I presented last time at the Ford Fix Live Security, but this is my first time hosting. And my name is Kevin Cools. I'm your host for the next half hour, 45 minutes. I'm here with Craig Johnson, my coworker and friend here at Ford Networks. How are you doing today, Craig? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, can't complain. It's a beautiful day down here in North Carolina. Uh, how are things down there in, in Texas? You know, it's a, it's a little overcast here, but we finally did uh, get below 90 degrees, so uh, cause for celebration. Indeed, yeah. Cause for celebration and uh, overcast is all right because it is a, a cloudy topic we're talking about today. Um, as I said, we both work for Ford Networks. The company was founded back in 2013 by some folks at Stanford that had a very interesting thought. That what if we could make software that built a digital twin, a behaviorally accurate software copy of your network, a model you could ask useful questions of. So that's exactly what they did. Our software collects configuration and importantly, state from all your routers, your switches, your firewalls, your load balancers. You have it pretty much whatever forwards traffic in your environment to include your cloud environments, AWS, Azure, Google. Using this data builds a model that contains all the forwarding rules, things like route tables, MAC address tables, and all the filtering rules, you know, like ACLs and other firewall rules. And it takes all that data to represent your entire environment. Then we layer on top of that, a variety of security network and security applications that allow you to ask very useful questions. We've had a lot of great resources about all the various networking and security use cases and applications built into our platform ready to go for you when you use it. And we'll share links to that at the end of the presentation. But today we're going to focus on the cloud side of things. AWS, Google, Azure, you see them down there in the bottom left corner. They've become fundamental to nearly every enterprise out there. And as folks are deploying or migrating to the cloud, there's a gap in the visibility or at least an incomplete view of the perspective traffic patterns within those customer networks. Clouds also have some different terminology and even a few different device types compared to their on-prem counterparts. And they, this may be foreign to some of the network and security teams. Oftentimes there's even a separate cloud team leading to some inconsistencies and in traffic and security policies between those environments. This presents a problem in service assurance. We wanna make sure that everyone can reach the applications and the ports and protocols they need, but also security compliance. We wanna make sure that they can only reach those, not any extras. And what our platform does uniquely well is to take into account all of that network, all the forwarding rules, the filtering, the translation rules, and notify you when something's out of compliance or out of your intent. You can do this on an hourly basis, a couple times a day, every few days, whatever works for you on your schedule. Now we want this session to be interactive. So please ask questions and chat. We'll try to address them as quickly as we can and as we go. Also, we will be rewarding the most engaging participants today with swag. So chat with us, answer the poll, give us a shout out on Twitter. The more we hear from you, the better we can make sure the content is what you're looking for. So we're gonna start with a few slides, but we promise it's just a level set, not death by PowerPoint. So without further ado, Craig, I'd love to hand it off to you. Thanks so much, Kevin. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the uh, the loving handoff. Um, what I wanted to kind of level set to talk about is that the fundamental problem that we see when you're trying to manage not even just a single cloud, but among multiple clouds, is that the way the terminology works and the constructs that we see within different clouds between on-prem are totally different and totally foreign. This has to this has implications for not just troubleshooting but for actual you know security compliance. Just to kind of give you an idea, you know, on-prem networking, you know, no matter what vendor you choose for your switches, your routers, firewalls, they all operate pretty much the same way. The protocols are still the same. Ethernet is still Ethernet. We're, you know, whether you choose Arista, Cisco, whatever, we're still working with the same models here. We still have the same routing protocols between vendors. You may choose different vendors of firewalls, but they all basically kind of do the same thing. 
The problem being there is that the tools that we use to validate uh, connectivity on-prem and also to validate security are totally different on the cloud and not even just on the cloud itself, but between clouds. To give you an idea, um, if I look at AWS, AWS has a kind of L2 construct, but it doesn't really forward like you think it does. It doesn't forward ARP. It doesn't do, do the same kind of routing. You can use some of the same routing protocols, but only BGP, and they have their own native peering functionality. Um, they have their own security functionality. They use security groups. They use network ACLs. And this is the same thing across every single cloud. You know, they all have their own little spin on things. What makes this even harder is trying to troubleshoot those environments. You know, they all have their own individual troubleshooting tools. You know, AWS has VPC you know, reachability analyzer, things like that, but they only work in their own little sandbox. They don't help you if you're trying to have an, if you have an application that goes between um, clouds or to your on-prem as well. But to even make that more complicated, if you decide to put your on-prem devices inside the cloud, say you put a virtual router or a virtual firewall, now you're dealing with all the same complexity that you had on-prem inside the cloud. Now you're dealing with a hybrid state. This is where we come in to, to try to help um, basically level set the entire environment so you can visualize the entire thing end to end. Give you an example kind of some of the the complexity you might see in a cloud so this is a very basic aws um architecture diagram notice it doesn't look okay, any... you said this was basic there's yeah, a lot basic. going on here that's, it. it's true yeah this, this <laughs> is this is only a single vpc so it gets way more Ooh. complicated than this if you have um any larger environment you see here this is only just a couple of subnets so we're looking at a VPC. We see all the different connectivity between them. Notice you don't see, you know, we don't see traditional routers. Everything you see here is, is pretty opaque to you. You know, you don't really know what's going on under the hood here. So pretty similar here. It takes, you know, several months to really understand all of the different AWS constructs. And just this week, there's a reInvent. They, they release new services all of the time. So you really have to keep up with it to make sure that if you're using any of the new services, or anything, that it's actually something that you can understand and consume. In forward, we collect this information to make it very simple. Same thing for GCP. Now, this is a, another fairly simple one, just a couple of projects that you see here. Notice they're not VPCs, they're projects here, but they have their own internal load balancers. They have their own zones right here. They have their own cloud DNS and, and that functionality. So there are some analogs with what you see in, in AWS, but you have to understand a completely different set of forwarding and functionality. You know, GCP doesn't do things on a regional basis. They do things on a global basis. So you see things totally different there doesn't get any easier when we start talking about Azure as well. You take all those same sorts of things, you know, Azure, I can run some things on-prem, I can run some things in the cloud. They have their own functionality. It's a little more on-prem like the way they do routing on there, but it's still its own little spin on that. And I'm really just kind of getting started. If you look at all of the different, you know, services you can do between clouds, yeah, they have some, some analogs and things like that, but it's really very, very different between them. If I look at how they do their storage options, how they do their networking options, how they do DNS connectivity, how they do compliance or analytics, you know, they're all very, very different from each other. And this is just a, a monumental task trying to do one, just basic troubleshooting, but two, trying to figure out, you know, your security between them. So I want to go ahead and stop sharing this slide right here and jump right into the product. What I want to show you is how we're able to rationalize all of these environments plus your on-prem to show you how we can actually do this. So what I'm so showing Craig, you- Before you jump into there, I just sure. had a question with, given all these complexities, all these differences, even between the cloud providers, is it common for folks to have more than one cloud provider or do they just kind of throw their hands up and say, I can't handle more than one? Absolutely. So, you know, in the early days, you, you pick one, typically AWS, but everyone's trying to hedge their bets. You know, everyone's changing their pricing. You need to be able to negotiate well between them. So you're, we're seeing at least two cloud providers, sometimes all three from many of our customers. And that's not necessarily transparent to the leadership, right? I mean, they're just going to say, oh, we're going to move from right. AWS to Azure and, and us engineers. Are we just kind of stuck holding the bag? I mean, how's that work? It's exactly right. You're basically stuck with, okay, we, we've got our application in one or more of the clouds. Now you have to deal with it. So you're, you're precisely right. Mm. Okay, then. <laughs> So to show how we can help this environment, what you're seeing here is a very small network that we've constructed. It's composed of a couple of different elements. So I have several on-prem uh, routers and switches and firewalls. 
but I also have connectivity to all three major cloud providers, GCP, AWS, and Azure. So how did we get this information? Well, if you're familiar with the, the core forward networks functionality, we collect all of the config and state from all of your on-prem devices right here. But on the cloud side, we use a similar read-only functionality, but instead of collecting to your devices, we're using the publicly available APIs to gather some of that read-only information. So if I look at AWS, you can see the accounts that I'm collecting from. So we can collect from one or multiple accounts. The, you know, we, we notice a lot of uh, large organizations may have many, many different accounts, depending on which group wants to use it. So you can get the full view of the entire network. And of course, you select what region you want to collect from. So you know it could be all of them, but depending on where you have deployed at, we're, you, we're going to be able to show you that information as well. So the same, Greg, when you're talking about collection here, is there is there any worry about forward changing the cloud environment or, or or how does it what kind of information does it need to collect while it's reaching out there so we need a very basic set of api connectivity so if you see right here we're going to show you the exact mm, permissions okay. that we need to collect so all of these permissions right here you know don't be confused by the terminology these are just you know basic aws terminology all these things right here you notice there's no config these are just describe list describe basically telling us what we can do to actually see the environment the same thing works for gcp as well so gcp of course you, you see it's got different regions we collect from we can collect from different projects so instead of accounts they call them projects in gcp but they're basically the same thing and you create a service account for us that is exactly the same level of functionality where we only have the ability to collect and view items never make any changes azure being the same thing but they have their own little spin on things they do a service account that you actually use to connect to your tenant that you're pulling in so as we've got all three of these inside the environment, we're collecting on a, on a schedule to go out and get all of this data to say, okay, every, in this case, two, twice per day, let's connect to all three of the cloud providers plus your on-prem environment, pull all of that information. So if I go back over to the main screen here, you'll see all three of my cloud providers. Let's select the snapshot that I want here. So I have all three of these cloud providers and you see VPN connectivity between my on-prem environment to the, to the individual cloud providers. So this automatically gets populated just by collecting that. We know just by looking saying, okay, we know our on-prem router has a VPN connection to my cloud provider, or maybe it's not even a VPN connection. Maybe it is a dedicated you know, express route or GCP interconnect. Let's go ahead and take one example. So I'm gonna go over and look at GCP here for a second. So as I expand this a little bit, you see a couple of different things here. You see all four VPCs that I have, plus a transit VPC that I have. So let's go ahead and jump over to the GCP console. Now, don't be alarmed if you're not familiar with it. This is just showing what we have configured in GCP will exactly mirror what we have in the platform. So you see here, I have those four VPCs that I showed you before plus a transit VPC, which we see very common when organizations get mature enough and they have a large enough environment, you have a broker that connects between all those VPCs together. So we have all those VPCs represented inside the platform, but how do we know how they're all connected? How do we know what can talk to what, what devices we have? Well, we represent that exactly the same way inside GCP. So in GCP, they do network peering on here. So you can do BGP, you can do the other things, but in this case, we're just doing a simple peering between that transit VPC and all of my sub VPCs. So we perfectly represent the environment. All of the, all, all the subnets that you see here are represented inside the platform. If I go over to the inventory, you'll actually see under cloud objects, all the information that we're pulling and collecting. So if I take a look at Google here and look at my instances, these are all of my VMs right here. We pull all of the VMs inside the environment so we know at all times what the entire footprint of the environment is. And keep in mind, we're collecting every day so that we can track these changes over time. So if I look at any one of these, let's go check out Amazon right here and go over to my EC2 instance. So you see a couple of them right there. So what I'm showing you here is all the devices I have inside AWS. Let's go ahead and look at this Palo Alto firewall. So this is the real trick that we have here as well. Notice here inside AWS, I have all of that connectivity here and I have all my AWS VPCs connected, 
but I don't inside AWS, if I pull this up, I'm not doing any peering between any of those right here. So how are all of these VPCs here connected to each other? In this case, I'm actually instantiating a Palo Alto firewall inside AWS. This way, I can have that level of hybrid connectivity. If you don't want to use the native AWS or GCP or Azure constructs, and you want to actually put your own devices in the cloud, we perfectly support that. We actually completely model exactly what they look like. So this is the device that I showed you. This is the Palo Alto firewall. That's the type it is. We're pulling all the public and private IPs, availability zones with it. Go a little deeper into it. You'll see exactly where it is what region it is, what subnet I have associated with it. So we show all of you that information at all times. So you get this view of the entire footprint of the entire environment as it exists today. So if I look at any one of these things, the real power of this is that I can actually show you paths inside the cloud and you can troubleshoot it like it was an on-prem environment. So let's go back over here to my inventory. And I'm just gonna take one device here Let's look at Amazon and look at the EC2 instance. Go ahead and just click this device right here. So you see this is the prod one instance I have here. So I can take this and say, okay, tell me where this device can actually talk to. Now, if I look at the path search right here, you see a path going from here to that Palo Alto that is the broker between them. Notice that when I look at all of these right here, every time that I'm going through the path search on my network, I show you all of the different parameters that work here. So here, if you're familiar with AWS, the way they do security is they use security groups and network ACLs. You see right here that we model all of those inside the network. So if there was a connectivity that wasn't allowed to be in, we would have that information and we would show you the forwarding state. You go all the way out to the next point right here, the route table. We show you all of the routes inside the route table. These are all routes that some of them are propagated. Some of these are all static routes. Some of these are BGP routes. Doesn't matter. We're modeling the plane just like it was, you know, an environment. To do this normally, you'd have to jump inside, you know, the VPC console, try to look at all the route tables, see where they change right there. You have several different route tables. That's not necessary. You don't need to log into the, you know, the AWS console to see this. We get all of that information for you. So we can kind of see the, the day in the life of the packet, you know, kind of for the crusty old engineers like me that are not, you know, the most cloud aware, but we can kind of understand, okay, here's L3 forwarding, here's some type of filtering, and it's all there in, in, you know, in plain English. Exactly right. So you see the entire environment end to end, no matter if it's, you know, AWS, Azure, on-prem, they all look the same because we know all these devices route, so they look just like in an interface you'd be very comfortable with. So let's take this to the next step. What if I'm trying to verify the security posture between different places? Well, if you remember from our last presentation, we can verify the security posture of all of the firewalls we have in our environment. That includes firewalls on-prem. So you see all the on-prem firewalls I have and all the different zones that I have associated with it. But it also includes that Palo Alto firewall I have inside the cloud that is doing connectivity between all of my VPCs. You know, we see I have several things that are denied here. Some here are partially connected, so we have some connectivity that's allowed through. So we see that model and we can actually give you an idea of what the security posture is. Because what we find is a really hard problem is, okay, I have all of these environments, I have all these environments, and they all need to work seamlessly, but I also need to verify that what can talk to each other can talk to each other, and things that can't talk to each other are, are blocked. Let me show you what that looks like. So I have this right here under SQL app. So let's say I have users um, in my SQL app uh, zone here, and they need to access a web server instance inside GCP to make sure that they can push their code to it. Well, just like you would do in an on-prem search, I simply have to type in where I'm coming from, and we're gonna say it's that SQL app, and I'm going to web-3, which is one of the instances I showed you before. And let's say I'm trying to push code, I'm trying to SSH lock in. So just like I showed you in the cloud, now we're showing you a hybrid environment right here. You have all of the connectivity on-prem, the firewall connectivity showing you all the rules that are associated with it, what's being permitted, what's being denied. But as I get down, you see actually me going out to the cloud. This is actually connectivity to the internet. So you actually see an underlay connectivity. This is the tunnel going from here into a VPN gateway inside GCP. 
you see all of the different map functionality. So GCP does some map functionality in the route tables. I don't have anything on here because it's showing you I'm blocking that right here. So it shows you all of those things that are permitted and denied right there. You go all the way out to the last point right here and you'll notice this guy says dropped. So it says the packet was denied by ACL rule. Now, maybe that's my intended effect. Maybe I did want to deny that, or maybe it's not. But just like I would do in anything on-prem, you can click on this C device state. And now I'm going to show you all of the GCP firewall rules. So GCP doesn't use security groups and network ACL. They have their own firewall connectivity. So you see this rule right here is the one that's blocking this connectivity. Let's go over to GCP and take a look at that inside my firewall right here. And as you can see, we're perfectly showing and modeling all of the different firewall rules inside GCP. And you can see that prod deny SSH right there that is blocking that connectivity. Now think about how difficult this would be. You know, I'm troubleshooting, you know, devices on-prem, so I might have to log into these devices and I could do pings and trace routes. But once I get into the cloud, there's, there's no real way to, to ping and trace route to things. I can maybe get on an instance and try it, but I can't log into this device right there. I can't log into these route tables because they're not real devices. They're just pure constructs. The idea being is that we can verify what the security profile of any point to any point across the entire network and showing you that right there. So Craig, that brings up a good question then, right? If we're, if we're trying to rationalize the security of the cloud, you know, because again, I'm still kind of have the, the on-prem frame of mind. How do I validate that the, the cloud providers are doing what they need to do to secure my traffic? I mean, where, where, where is that done? Or, or did, I, did we have to create all those rules in the security groups or how does that work? And that's really the, uh, that's really the big, uh, the, the big for, for the cloud, you know, the cloud, you know, advertises that they're the most secure thing and they have way more security engineers than you do. What they're securing is they're securing their own environments, which means you can't go from one to account to another because they have good security there. But your security among your own data um, is not protected in any way by the cloud. You can see every week there's someone that has an S3 bucket open and there's a da data exfiltration. This is all up to you. So you can't just rely on the cloud provider security. Of course, they will consult and help you create these rules, but it's really up to you to validate and to make changes in this environment. The real, the real issue that we see is because cloud is so easy to set up and so easy to make changes, you know, I can go in here you know, and I can add a VPC very easily. I can add new instances. It takes me literally seconds to do so where on-prem it might take weeks to do the same thing. Being able to validate that the changes that are being done in the environment conform to your security policy is really where we can, we can help you uh, in that environment. Well, I mean, that sounds huge. I mean, because everybody's migrating applications to the cloud and, you know, they have security policies in place with their firewalls on-prem. That's stuff that, you know, we can kind of wrap our heads around. But uh, yeah, translating that into these cloud constructs sounds, you know, not impossible, but sounds challenging, right? It sounds like there's a lot of effort to, to number one, understand what to do and, and then how to do it, and then to make sure you're doing it right. It's a quite daunting thing. The, the cloud offers a massive amount of flexibility. Like I can, if, if you go back to the, 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 the architecture diagrams I showed you, I have a lot of freedom to build my environment however I want to, but being able to say, now that I've built it how I want to, does the security policy work and does my connectivity work? That's what gets really, really hard. And it's also a very, very dynamic environment. You know, your on-prem environment, you know, these are physical switches and routers and firewall. Maybe they're virtual, but they're mostly static. Things in the cloud can change on the dime. You know, if I just add an, add an instance, add a VPC, you know, if I have one particular development group that wants to have their own dev, dev environment, it's very easy to create things. And being able to wrap your head around that and get that environment that you know exactly what's going on is the real key to it. So this little search I showed you right here, going from my um, on-prem environment to that instance in the cloud, I can take this and I can make this more proactive so that if what I said before, if somebody makes changes to it, I can go ahead and look and say, okay, the changes that they've made, I want to know that they're validated yes or no. So this is where you don't even really need to understand the cloud constructs. You just have to understand the intent of what you're doing. So I've taken what I showed you right there and turned this into an intent check. So you see right there, going from there to SSH, it shows up as fail. And now I have a history over time of whenever I take a snapshot, if something succeeds and something fails. So in this case, 
this failed right here because I said I did want this to work, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I didn't want this to work so I can make this a different type of check to actually show that, no, this is not supposed to be able to talk to each other, that my policy says, you know, this VR, this uh, zone cannot talk to this one, so this is correct. So I can take this and I have this as an intent check. So whenever an intent check here shows up as failed, I can be notified by an email, I can create a ticket for you to make sure that the policy that I have is no matter who makes the changes, no matter what changes they make in the cloud, whenever we take a collection, it will show you that exact same thing. It will show you what the failure is. So I got a follow on question to that then, Craig. Can you kind of recycle your intent checks that maybe you made for the on-prem and use them for if you're migrating applications and, and services into the cloud to make sure you have the same security posture and same access? Yeah, absolutely. So you see, we have a variety of different ones for on-prem environments showing you my security compliance on the on-prem environment. This can easily be recycled and say, I know my application, I know where my application exists, I know where it should be. No matter if it's what, what stage it is on-prem or in the cloud, you can use the exact same thing. And it doesn't matter even if I'm on-prem, I'm, I'm looking at firewall rules or, and ACLs on routers. And, I, and when I'm in the cloud, I'm looking at security groups and network ACLs. We're going to show you no matter what it is that the intent is the same. So I want to show awesome. you, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I want to show you one other example, how we're modeling this whole thing. So I showed you the AWS Azure and GCP environment. You may have noticed there's a line right here. So I'm not only showing you connectivity from my on-prem to the cloud, but I'm also showing you connectivity between my cloud providers. So what I've done here is I've created a tunnel, an IPsec tunnel between AWS and GCP to that Palo Alto firewall I built inside AWS to essentially reduce the latency. Let's say I have a, a even more hybrid application where some are in GCP and some are in AWS because you're trying to hedge between them. But I want if I, if I have if I want my GCP instance to talk to AWS, I want to make sure that that doesn't go to my on-prem environment because I can incur a lot more egress charges and connectivity going all the way back there and all the way up there. You're going to have a lot more latency. You're going to see a much more detrimental performance. Well, we can validate that as well. So if I go back over to the intent check that I created right here, I have one here called GCP to AWS. So if you remember, I showed you over here on the cloud objects, we have devices in, in AWS and we have devices in GCP. So let's go ahead and take one of those that I showed you in AWS and do the exact same path search. So I want to go from that instance I talked about in AWS to that same one inside GCP. So you can see here, it's being blocked here, which is what I expect. Let's go back over to the intent check. If you look right here, I'm gonna take this delivered out right here. I have connectivity between my web instance and my GCP instance, but I want you to notice that the paths is taking. So I expect it should be going over my VPN link. But if you look at the path here, my routing is not configured correctly because you can see right here, it's actually going to my on-prem instance. However, I have multiple paths inside this environment, which means I'm actually doing some ECMP because if you look at a couple of different paths, I am using that tunnel in some cases. So now I have a kind of split connectivity. I need to correct my routing here. Since I have this set up as an intent check, it shows up as failed. I know I'm blocking my security policy. I know I'm not conforming to my routing policy. And I didn't really even need to know all the different devices end to end. All I had to do was say, I'm just going from my GCP to my AWS, what's being allowed, what's being blocked, and what path it's taking. So this is how we can save you some money on ingress and egress charges. You know, we know exactly how it's traversing inside the environment. Here we're showing it's, you know, this one is going incorrectly onto my on-prem, but the same path, which is an ECMP path, would go into the VPN connectivity. So this is kind of the high level of what we do inside the cloud. I just want to kind of pause for a few minutes and see if there are any other questions that we've gotten in chat, because really we can go much, much deeper into this. Um, you know, the connectivity that I have here is, is very basic, but you can expand this to be as, as, as expansive as needed to be. So anything you want to add, Kevin? Oh, we did have a couple of questions um, come in. So uh, one of them was around, you know, what are the, some of the most common cloud you know, security issues that, that, we've, that we've detected and which ones might be preventable? 
So I would say kind of a big question there. It is a big question. I would say the biggest ones that we see are things that are left open to the internet. So if I go over here inside my, inside my AWS, I have internet gateways that are allowing connectivity to the internet. If I have my devices that have connection to the internet, maybe they do need connection, maybe because they're public facing, or maybe that I've just you know, done that to make it easy to, to pull, pull code down from a different place. Having those things that I have connected to the internet, if I'm leaving something open, let's say I left a storage bucket open, so it has all my data on it. It was just meant to be inside my environment, but now everyone has access to it. We see that a lot. And with something we can model just the same here in this environment, I would say coming from my internet node here to those devices that are supposed to be secured, what kind of access am I being permitted? What kind of access is being allowed? This is what we see the most is, you know, devices that are supposed to have some connectivity to the, to the, the public internet, but not all the connectivity. Gotcha. So another, another good one I thought was that, you know, they already get a bunch of alerts through their, uh, their clouds uh, providers and their security applications. How is this help? Is this making it, you know, is it helping provide context or is this just another alert on the pile? No, I think we provide a lot more context because as I mentioned, when we first started, all those alerts that you get are all in their own little sandbox. You know, AWS will tell you what they see inside AWS. GCP will do the same. Maybe you have your on-prem reporting that will show you if there is a route missing or have lost connectivity, but they only go up to the edges of their own borders. Where we come in is we're able to give you that that high level dashboard, that high level view and say, I'm not really necessarily caring about, you know, does this router work or, you know, am I having performance issues, but I really care about the full intent. So using us as a starting point to say, hey, this is not working, you know, tell me what the path is, it lets you really narrow down the troubleshooting because all those paths I showed you where I was doing, you know, froms and twos and things like that, I'm able to use that same sort of information to essentially narrowed down exactly where my problem is, or if I have a, a security policy violation, because we're not just modeling on a point way, we're modeling the entire environment. Okay, and then actually we got a question come from the other direction, you know, uh, folks that are more uh, cloud savvy, what can they do with forward to query information uh, about the network as a whole without having to necessarily, you know, uh, look at the platform itself? So everything that I show you right here, just like the cloud providers, we're an API first company, you can take all of this information and you can use this to essentially do what you would do inside like an AWS or GCP. You can use this to query the path to validate connectivity, not just between your cloud providers, but all the way back to on-prem. So yeah, if you look at something like AWS, you know, reachability analyzer right here, we can take the same information, whereas here reachability, they'll they'll charge you, you know, about 10 cents a pop to do it. We give you the entire path and we'll let you see, you know, beyond the borders of just that cloud environment. Gotcha. Yeah. So so the reachability analyzer is only going to tell you what's going on within AWS. And it's it's very limited. It shows you gotcha. in AWS and it shows you some of the gateways and things inside AWS. But as soon as I go past this VPN gateway connectivity to anything else, that's where it ends. Yeah, it looks like all those different things, different objects, those were in forward anyways, right? So they're already there? Precisely right. Just okay. by already pulling those in there, we already have all that same information. We can model it just the same as what, as they do, but beyond their own borders. Gotcha. Well, I think that covers uh, the questions that we had coming in. Um, I feel a lot smarter now, you know, uh, about cloud. Thank you for that, that Craig. Uh, we did have um, one last slide, yeah, to, to show. If you'd love to see a more personalized demo, please uh, share some information. It's gonna be demos from engineers for engineers, right? So we're not gonna kill you with PowerPoint. We're gonna get down to it and show you how the platform works and how it can impact and assist in your environment. And likewise, we have some links to share for some other uh, useful information. You know, you can look, take a look at our blog. We had a bunch of great blog posts and even stuff about the cloud. Uh, we got a, a whole slew of videos on our YouTube channel, and we even have a podcast uh, for, for Seeking Truth and Networking. That's really more about networking in general and the history and the inception of how it's changed over time. Really entertaining stuff. But I wanted to say thank you so much for your time, for, for joining. Check out the links, you know, uh, reg uh, register for the blog series, register, and also take a look at, we're going to have some forward fixed lives coming out in the future with additional topics. But I wanted to thank, thank Craig for, for being a great 
you know, uh, uh, the great host today and sharing all this information with you. And thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.